Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today on this live video. I'm Nikki and this is Isabella. Um, we're so excited to be here with you guys today. We're actually streaming live on our Instagram as well as our YouTube channel. Um, our YouTube channel offers a lot of video educational content and information, so always feel free to jump over on our YouTube. Um, I'm going to give you guys just a second to join us. What we're going to be talking about today is um, the the um, video I previously did this morning on how to properly place a, sh a lash mapping shape onto the client's natural eye. And I'm also going to talk about how to break down a client's natural eye shape so that you know what look will be best for them. So that's why I have Isabella, this beautiful, lovely girl right here. Um, and I will break down her eye for you and walk you through step by step exactly how that works. So feel free to ask any questions that you need to about lash mapping, eye shape, anything in general, and we will answer those for you. So we'll give you guys just a second to hop on, let us know where you're from. Eye shape, anything in general, and we'll answer those for you. So we'll give you guys Okay. Awesome, awesome. So I'm gonna start. We have Isabella here. Beautiful, lovely lady, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you step by step exactly how I break down an eye. Now this is very basic. Um, it's kind of a very simple way to determine what your client's eye shape is so that you can then decide what shape would be best for them, okay? So the first thing I do is I look horizontally from her inner corner to her outer corner. So in my mind, as I'm doing a consultation, I will draw kind of a, an imaginary line right across her eye to decide if she is straight across, if she has a downturn eye or if she has an upturn eye. Okay, so looking at Isabella here, she is almost straight across, slightly, slightly, slightly. This side is a tiny bit lower than her inner corner, okay? So learning that she has a slightly downturn eye, the best thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take into play, we don't wanna create any shape that will pull down on her eye. We wanna create a shape that will pull up to give it that nice almond shape. The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to look at her top line, so what her actual eyelid is doing. If it's an open eye, if it's an almond eye, if she has more of a monolid or straight across eyelid, that's my second step that I'm gonna do. So I'm just looking at her she has a nice almond shape. She, her highest part is right in the center, okay? So that's on the line of an open eye or an almond eye. She has a great shape. You can kind of do anything you want here. Um, the second thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to look at this brow bone, okay? So a lot of things that I see, um, especially with newer students or new people in the lash industry, is they kind of get a one size fits all style. So for example, I'm gonna do a cat eye on everybody and I'm gonna do it in D curl because I like that look. That is okay, personal preference when you're deciding what lash mapping to do, but you have to take into play their brow bone as well as the space between her lash line and her eyebrow, okay? Because this varies from client to client. Sorry, I'm reading one of your questions. What do you recommend for a hooded eye with sparse lashes? Lash boo, that's a great question. Um, so for a recommended, for a hooded eye, you wanna stay with a softer curl. So what I mean by that, because it's very hooded, you don't have a lot of space between the lashes and the actual skin or brow area. So if you stick with a softer curl, like a C curl or even a B curl, just depending on the client's um, natural eye shape or depending how hooded they are, that would be a better curl for them. And then if they have sparse lashes, it's always best to do a volume, um, just because you can close space and close gaps by creating fans that will give you a full coverage across the entire lash line. That's a great question, guys. Keep them coming in. Any questions you have, just start asking. So again, back to Isabella. I'm gonna look at this brow bone here. So if you turn your head to the side for me. So you can see here, her eyelid still sticks out a little bit farther than her brow bone, okay? So I have space there to kind of do a C, a D curl even on her. Now look back straight at the camera. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this, but she has very long, very pretty, strong natural lashes. Go ahead and look up at the ceiling for me. Perfect. So you can see here, her lashes almost touch her eyebrow right there. She's really lucky. Okay, go ahead and look down. Um, but what I wanna do is, and look straight at the camera for me, is I wanna decide what length I can do on her that won't go up into the brow area, okay? That's another thing we see, is sometimes 
you like a 14 length or even a 15 millimeter length. Um, again, it depends on every client. If you do too long of extensions and it does go up into the brow area, it's gonna take away the softness and the shape of the eyes and it can actually um, make the face become a little bit distorted. Um, I don't know if that's the right word to use, um, but it can just kind of look funny. So you never want the lashes to be sitting or resting up in the brow bone or the brow eyebrow. You want it to shape and flow with the eye very naturally, okay? So with Isabella here, depending if she wants a classic or a dramatic look, that's what's gonna help me decide which type of lashes I'm doing, whether it's classic or volume. And then again, I've decided her eye shape can hold a C, D curl. So if she wants more natural or dramatic, I will then decide what curl I'm gonna use. And then for length, just because she has very long natural lashes and she doesn't have a lot of space between her lash line and her eyebrow, I would probably stay 13 and under. I wouldn't wanna go 14s or 15s because again, it would hit into the brow area. So I hope that was helpful. Again, I'm gonna walk you through real quick how to break down an eye, right? Horizontal line, right across the eye, determine her inner and outer corner. Second thing, I'm gonna look at her top line. Okay. If she has an open eye or a straight monolid eye or an almond eye shape. So the third thing, I'm going to look at the brow bone, whether it's a hooded eye or a protruding eye. And then I'm going to look at the distance between her lash line and her eyebrow. Okay. That's going to help me determine what curl, what style, what length to do on your client to flatter the client's face and eye shape. Okay. Awesome. I hope that helps you guys out. Um, now we're kind of just going to jump to questions and I'm going to answer any questions you guys have. All right. Okay, are pre-made fans damaging to the natural lash? Jody. Okay, so pre-made fans are something that are talked a lot about um, in the lash industry nowadays. When they first came out, um, they kind of used to be clusters. So what I mean by that is they weren't um, calculated properly. Um, it's the clusters that have the square bases, um, the ones that you can basically buy from Walmart. Um, now those type of pre-made fans, yes, they're very damaging to the natural lash, um, mainly because they're too heavy and to isolate and place that onto a natural lash, it can cause lash damage. Now the industry is growing. It has become such an amazing industry to be a part of. And nowadays there are pre-made fans out there that are made properly. There are pre-made fans out there that are heat treated with glue. You know, they're 0 0.07 millimeter, um, or 0 0.07 diameter extensions and they are in a 4D fan. And again, if the natural lash can hold it, that's totally fine. Um, so do your research. Be careful with what you, type of pre-made fans you're choosing. Make sure that the base of that pre-made fan is in a nice V and that it's not too many, too many lashes bunched in together. Um, the fan should be separated and symmetrical and balanced. Good question. How about L curl for hooded eyes? Great question. Who is that? Okay, sorry, I don't want to slaughter your name. Um, I probably won't pronounce this properly. I don't mean to, I apologize. Vero Giri. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, how about L curls for hooded lashes? That is an amazing question. L curl for very, very hooded or monolid clients is perfect. The reason it's so good for those types of eye shapes is because that L, the L shape on the bottom, protrudes out and away from the client's natural eye shape before it curls up. That is a great option if those clients do want a very dramatic um, look. If they like lashes that are super full and super dramatic, that L curl will still give them that without hitting into the brow bone or into the eye area. So that L curl is perfect for that. Um, now L curl is a little tricky sometimes, that just takes practice to work with them. Great, great question. Is there a shape that works for everyone or do you always customize the look? Yes, there are shapes that can work for everyone. Natural eye shape is very, very basic and it will fit anyone's natural eye shape. Um, now there are shapes that work better for others. Um, I do personally customize all of my um, lash shapes um, to the client's natural eye because my goal with that is you want to flatter their eye shape and their face shape, okay? So if we kind of take it back to um, esthetician school or cosmetology school, what we're taught is the ideal face shape is an oval face shape, right? So if you have a square jawline or a square um, forehead, we want to soften those to make them appear nice and oval and beautiful. Same thing with a natural eye shape. What we're trying to accomplish is a perfect almond eye shape. 
so that it flatters the client's eye and face shape perfectly. So I would recommend customizing each eye, each shape for each client, um, but there are some like a natural eye or even a cat eye mostly looks great on everybody except for someone with a very upturned eye. So for example, if Isabella's eye kind of came and sat up, if I were to do a cat eye on her, it would make her eyes seem even more upward. So just be careful with that one. Great question. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for the questions, guys. So Bella Lash does not sell pre-made fans as of right now. So sorry about that. Okay, Makeup by Selena. Do you get more single lash extensions or more volume lash extensions? Um, I hope that you mean that by clients. I think that's what you mean. If it's not, type in another question and let me know. Um, when I first started lashing, classic lashing was the only option available. Um, volume has kind of hit the market and taken off in the last few years. So most of my clients now are volume. I do have a lot of hybrid, which is a mix between classic and volume lashes. Um, but it's honestly just depends on your clientele, where you live, where you're from, that kind of thing. Um, I think it's great to offer everything um, just to be able to um, satisfy all your clients' needs that way. So good questions, guys. Okay, next question. Can you scroll down for me a little bit? Sorry, guys. Give me one second. Okay. Next question. How do you build a clientele? That's a great question. I think that's the biggest question we get from all lash artists um, when there are so many competitors. That's a really good question. Um, the best advice I can give you is take your time and do quality work. Don't rush through something. Um, if you're that artist that's trying to just get as many lash artists as you can or as many clients as you can in and out the door um, and you're not spending quality time on each client, um, they can kind of feel like you're just passing them through lines. So, I personally just like to be honest to, with all my clients. I feel that you know taking the right amount of time on each client so that they feel special um, is a great idea. Now, if you're in an area that's fully saturated, um, is it hard? Absolutely. Is it possible? Definitely. Um, you kind of just need to figure out what your strong points are and then promote those, advertise for those. That's a great way to set yourself apart in the lash industry. Every artist, whether we're doing volume, classic, or hybrid, we all kind of have our own style and we all kind of have our own way of placing lashes. So we each stand out in a different way. So if you really find that strong, um, that thing that kind of you're really, really good at, I would kind of really promote that and really set yourself apart from the artists out there and then you can get more clients that way. These are great questions, you guys. I feel 100% confident and comfortable lashing. Okay, next question. How long did it take you to feel 110% confident and comfortable lashing? That's a really great question. Um, took me two separate times and I'll tell you why. When I first learned lashes, again, it was only classic lashing. Um, it took me a little while. The industry back then, back in 2008, was extremely different than what it is now. Um, and so when I first started, I'll be honest, it was really hard for me. I didn't love it. It was the methods were kind of crazy. Um, you know, they came in these little things and you had to dump them out. And that was a struggle for me. It took me a good year to really feel like, okay, I can sit down with my clients and I can lash and I'm happy with the outcome. They're happy with the outcome and I'm good to go. Now curveball was thrown at me. Um, when volume hybrid, all this stuff started coming out. So again, I had to go back to school. I had to learn volume lashing. I had to do that on my own. And it took me a good six months from going from classic to volume to really feel comfortable sitting down um, and being able to lash a client. Now, I'm gonna be honest, it's, it's not like I learned everything that I know now that one time I took a volume course. I'm learning something every single day. You know, when it comes to breaking down a client's eye, that took me a long time to really figure out and really understand it. Um, it also took me a long time to really get down um, using all the different diameters of volume lashing. Um, so never give up on yourself. Just keep going. Just know that all of us, no matter where we're at in our lash life, we're always still learning. We're always still trying. We have to keep up with the methods and the new techniques that are coming out. So 
don't get discouraged. You're doing amazing. Keep going. Um, but give yourself, you know, six months to a year, you know, give yourself that time to really decide what kind of clientele you want, decide what kind of services you want to offer and really give yourself that time to um, master the lash, lash artistry because it's, it is an art and it's fun and it, it's, it should be enjoyable. Okay, next question. You guys, these questions are awesome. I love them. Will Bella, will Bella train for mega volume anytime in the future? Future is awesome and future is amazing. And we will get there. Okay, next question. Does thicker lashes make the eye look thicker? May, um, my lashes look very natural and I'm wondering if a thicker lash line would make them a little more full. Absolutely. So um, the fuller or the more dense you can make the lashes seem, of course it's going to um, make the eye area or make the intensity of the lashes look thicker and fuller. Um, now, if you feel you have natural lashes and you want more density and more of a shadow, a really strong shadow line, I would recommend sticking to shorter lengths. So the shorter you go with lashes, the thicker they're gonna look. That thicker, that thick dark lash line is gonna just be so full and beautiful, the shorter you go. The longer you go, if you're in the 14, 13 millimeters, you're gonna get more of that wispy look. So if you prefer a dark lash line over length, then I would definitely drop down in length and that will help you achieve that darker lash line. Okay, Kelsey Beauty. I've had a client recently whose iPad would not stay in place. I had to reapply it a few times. What is the best advice for something like that? That's a great question. Happens to all of us. There are clients that have eye shapes that are very hard to tape and very hard to work with. Um, so there's a few different options, um, a few different taping methods. If you're having a very, very, very hard time with the pad slipping, what I would recommend is when you're placing it, place it slightly lower than what you normally do. Then I would use tape to make sure to catch all of those little baby lashes that the gel patch left out, as well as extend the tape to make sure that it extends off the patch and holds onto the client's actual skin. If you can do that on the outer corner and the inner corner, you're gonna secure the pad and the tape onto the client's skin area so that it will help with slipping. If you're using pads and a tape and you're only putting the tape on the pad, once that pad moves, everything moves. So make sure you have secure points. Um, if you're doing that and it's still slipping, you could use a piece of tape and attach it to the gel patch and then on the cheekbone, um, to help secure it another way. Um, biggest thing I'm gonna tell you is if your clients talk a lot and it's moving a lot, I would just recommend to have them stop talking because some people's cheekbones are a little bit higher and they're very expressive when they talk. So if they're talking a lot, it could move the pads on you and that gets really hard. So have your client relax, not talk as much, and then use tape to secure it onto the face shape or the skin area. Great question. Do you offer a book on shape and hygiene? Basically all of the ins and outs of lashing, all of your knowledge in a book. I currently, so we at Bella Lash have a great training system, all right? So we launched the new academy, which is amazing. Um, it is online as well as in class training. So what happens is when you purchase our um, training anywhere around the world, we have multiple locations all over. Um, when you purchase that initial, or when you make the initial payment for our Lash Academy, what happens is you get released the online portal. The online portal is all of our ed education in depth, um, online, you can go through it at your own pace. And then when you show up for the two day course, it is all hands on with the educator. They kind of dig in deep, all the extra little points that I'm sharing with you, they will share with you um, and kind of give you more personal tips and tricks in the class while you practice. Um, and then you're always, you're always allowed access to the online portal. So. Our academy is awesome. Check that out. Um, and then again, you're going to learn a lot as you're a lash artist. You learn as you go and kind of pick it up as you go as well. Okay. Lash freaks. Thanks. So inspiring for a lash newbie. Good. I'm so glad it's helpful. Okay. What is the best way to relax curly lashes before lashing without using chemicals? So, um, if you have someone with an ethnic background that has very, very curly natural lashes, um, you could, if you don't want a lash lift, okay, so if you did choose that option, you need to wait 24 hours 
to use um, or to place eyelash extensions after you've lash lift or perm someone's eyelashes. Now, if that's something you don't want to do, if the client does not have um, eyelash extensions on, so new full set of fresh lashes, you can actually use one of those heated lash curlers and you can actually heat it up and brush through the lashes a few times and that kind of will tame it down a little bit. Will it completely straighten them? No, it won't, but it will help tame it down a little bit so that you can get a better bond on those. Now, of course, you can't use a heated lash curler when you have eyelash extensions on because it will melt them. Um, but for a new set, especially you want to save yourself some time, you can use a heated lash curler and you can brush through those lashes multiple times to get them a little bit straighter and that could help you. Great question. Tell me about applying best for aging eyes or eyes over 50 like myself. Okay, so with older clients, um, so how do I say this nicely? It's the older we get, our skin kind of starts to sag, right? It's the name of the game, it's the circle of life, um, especially the eye area. The eye area has such delicate skin. When we get older, it does become a little bit more saggier and, and it loses its um, elasticity, right? So when you're lashing on older clients, I love using tape to help me work. So what I mean by that is I will use our um, 3M blue tape and I will tear pieces. Now, if I'm having trouble with the inner corners, I will place the tape and pull that eye out a little bit. If you're having issues from top view with the skin, what you can do is go ahead and close for me. You can place a piece of tape on the eyelid and slightly lift. What that does is that will lift the skin away from the lash area as well as help you get better access to that. You can do that across the whole eye. If I needed to do inner corner on the middle of the eye, if I needed to pull this up a little bit just to give myself a better working area, that is definitely an option. Um, so I use tape a lot with those clients. If I'm ever struggling or getting into a hard place, I'll use that blue tape to help me you know, get into those hard spots. Okay. Inner and outer corner tips. Inner and outer corner, same thing. I would use tape. Tape is my best friend with all those tricky little hard spots. Um, I really, really enjoy using tape. Again, go ahead and close for me. Um, I can lift, I can, if I, if I have lashes placed and there's a lot of really baby, a lot of those baby hairs underneath that are really hard to get to, I'll apply a piece of tape over those lashes that I've already lashed and do a lift up. I'll put a piece of tape here and I can lift the outer corner. I can even pull the outer corner inward to get a better um, line of view of those lashes so I can place easier. Tape, 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 it's your best friend. Get it, if you don't have it. Okay, I love you all so much. You guys are sending in great questions. Okay, what do you recommend for smaller eyes? How can I help open up a client's eyes? So for smaller eyes in general, that's hard. Um, you know, placing tape, placing gel patches, things like that, it's hard. I kind of like to cut my gel patches and my tape to fit the client's eye so I don't feel like I'm fighting that large eye pad around the eye area. So I personally like to cut and customize my gel patches. Um, and then again, using tape. Now with smaller eyes, you can, you can do types of mapping that will help that. For example, like if they have very small closed off eyes, you can do an open eye and that will give you the visual effect of the eye pop. Um, so using maps that way, um, also a dramatic eye would help make their eyes seem bigger. Um, another thing is the way you use curls, okay? So C curl, if you can remember, if I place a C curl on her outer corner, what it would do is it would elongate and pull that area upward, okay? Now if I placed a D curl on her, I would place on the outer corner. What that does is decurl because it's so curled up, it pulls upward. So if you want to give the effect of open and lift, you should use a decurl in those areas. If you want to create length and um, pull, C curl works great for that. Okay. Um, do you have an online volume course? So we do. We have launched um, the online volume academy. So that is another option. Um, it's based the same way as our um, classic academy. So hand, or online training first, hands-on training in class. Okay, adhesive tips, please. You guys are awesome. Okay, adhesive tips. Biggest thing with adhesive is you have to make sure you're using that adhesive um, in the right humidity level. So if you are in an area like Florida that has very high humidity, you need to get a dehumidifier. If I'm working with adhesive, in a very, very, very high humidity area, what's gonna happen is that adhesive is gonna dry like that, okay? Because moisture is what cures the adhesive. 
Now, if I'm somewhere, for example, Utah, we're very, very dry here. So if I'm lashing in a place that does not have a lot of humidity, what's gonna happen is that adhesive is gonna take longer to dry. So you wanna be in that 40 to 65% range in general when you're using adhesives. That will give you enough moisture in the air to be able to lash efficient, efficiently and have the proper dry time when you're using it. Um, but humidity, that's, that's huge. Second thing is the way you store it. Always make sure your bottle's standing up so it's not tilted over so that the glue constantly pours out of the tip and it gets messy. Um, when you're using it, make sure you shake it for at least a minute before you use it the first time. Um, and then after you dispense it, wipe that nozzle off so it doesn't get built up and then put the cap back on and again, stand it up. When you're storing it, it just needs to be in a cool, dry place away from heat and the cold. I would never recommend putting adhesive in the fridge because it creates condensation in the bottle. Um, same with the freezer, just avoid that. For me, when I order adhesives in bulk, I store the adhesives that are unopened in just my lower shelf in just a cool, dry area that doesn't vary in temperature. And then when I use it, I have about four to six weeks of fresh adhesive to work with before I need to replace it and get a new one. I hope that answers your question. If you have more of a specific question, go ahead and ask. Okay, how would you recommend setting price increase to pre-existing clients? It's a great question. Um, of course, it's always a little awkward, right? When we have to raise our prices. I personally like to send out personal texts to my clients and I'll just let them know of the increase. I'll remind them, you know, hey, I appreciate you as a client. Um, I love doing your lashes, but as you know, I've raised my prices. You can give an explanation if you need to. You know, you can say, you know, as my experience continues to grow and my education, I'm taking additional education courses. I'm just raising my prices to match, um, you know, my work. Um, clients that love you and love your work, they're going to be okay with it. There are going to be some people that are not. That is okay. We cannot please everybody, but people that respect you and your work will stay with you. Um, I would just, of course, be smart with your prices. You don't want to raise it up $100, right, per fill or per, per first full set. Um, but, you know, if you're increasing your prices $10, $15, I think they'll, they'll be okay with that. Just again, let them know that you respect them and you value them as a client and the reason you're raising your prices. Okay, advice on how to get a state license once we've been certified without having to go to cosmetology school. It's a great question. That's very, very tricky. So back when eyelash extensions first came out, you did not have to be licensed in any state. Okay, so you could go to a course, take a two day course and get licensed. Now, most states now require a cosmetology or esthetician license. That's up to you. Think about what you want to do. Would you rather do hair or would you rather do skin? Now there's options to this, of course. To perform eyelash extensions in those states, you have to be licensed. And it's a hard thing to hear, but you have to do it. Um, we have to abide by our state laws and we need to make sure as lash artists, we have to be following specific rules for that. Now, if you just want to be a lash artist, Esthetician school is shorter than cosmetology school, so that's something you can look into. Um, if you are interested in, hey, maybe I can do hair on the side, cosmetology school is great. Each state has a different requirement on how many hours you need, and each school has different pricing. So just do your research. If you just wanna do lashes, I would probably pick the school that requires the least amount of hours, and then look for cost differences there. Okay, next question. What do you think about the Genius Lab shaker for glue. Um, if the one you're talking about is the vibrator that vibrates really, really fast, um, yeah, that's that. Any way that you can shake up your glue properly is fine. Um, you know, everyone has personal preferences with what they use and how they like to shake their adhesive. Um, so that's just a personal preference. Um, I don't believe it does any damage. So that's a good thing. As long as you're not getting a lot of air bubbles. If it shakes it so fast, you're getting a lot of air bubbles, that might be an issue. Um, but other than that, it's probably great. Okay, what do you use to wipe the tip of the glue bottle off with? Okay, um, so I personally like to use my 3M blue tape. I tear a little piece, I stick it on my finger so that when I'm shaking it up, um, I like to take my lid off. Okay, let me take a step back, sorry guys. I like to take the lid off while I'm shaking it. The reason being is if I sit there and shake it with the lid on, it can kind of squirt out the top and then my nozzle and my lid can get really, really messy. So I like to tear, I wish we had a piece of blue tape. Um, I'll see if someone can find me a piece of blue tape real quick and I'll show you exactly what I do. Um, so I tear a piece off, I fold it in half and I stick it on my finger. I place my finger over the nozzle of the adhesive and I just shake it up for about a minute. 
Now, once I'm done shaking that, I do disperse it onto my jade stone, and then using that same blue tape, I just go ahead and wipe the nozzle off. So I'll kind of show you how I place it on my finger. Awesome, got some help here. Thank you very much. Um, the reason I love this blue tape so much is because number one, it is so so comfortable for the client. It will never pull their skin, their hair. Um, the texture or the tackiness of the tape never changes. Um, sometimes with the white tape, if someone has super dry or super oily skin, it can either not stick or it can become too sticky. So the reason I love this blue tape is because it never changes, super gentle on the client, and it also is lint free. So there's no particles across the top when you're brushing through it, it works great. So this is what I do, I pull a piece of tape off, Fold it in half and then I will stick it on my finger just like this and then I'll hold the nozzle in the bottle like this and I'll shake it for about a minute. Then once I'm done, I will disperse it and then I will use this piece of tape to wipe off the nozzle just like that. And then I will store this on my workstation while I'm working on that client. Of course, I get a new one with every client um, and then I'll kind of store it. So then every time I need to refresh my glue, again, I'll just put it right back on my finger, shake it, wipe the nozzle off to keep it clean. So that's personal tip that I like to do. You can try it let me know how it goes. Okay. Um, what do you do with the tip of the glue bottle? What kind of tape is safe to use on a jade stone that will cause a chemical reaction? So if you're using tape on a jade stone, the only thing is you have to make sure it is cotton and lint free because if it has cotton in the tape, it will cause a chemical reaction. Any tape like this blue tape, our white tape is also cotton free. Um, so any of those tapes were great for adhesive on a jade stone. I've noticed that people use different tweezers for volume washing. What set do you prefer and why? Um, great part, great, wow, sorry guys. Great question. <laughs> um, I prefer um, a volume tool that has a boot or foot. Um, the reason being is I like to have a very large work zone because I do so many different types of volume fans and things like that. Um, so. A tweezer like our Volume Pro is my favorite. Um, again, I prefer it because of the methods that I use. Now, it depends on what method that you're doing. Um, if you're a scrubber or if you're a person that makes very wide fans, you'll need a little bit of a long skinny bottom like our um, petite tweezer. That would work great for you. Um, again, it's personal preference. You kind of have to try them and see what you like. But what you should concentrate on is the work zone of the tweezer. So how the tweezer closes so that you can decide if I make narrow fans or wide fans, I can decide what tool would be best for me. Okay. The three. Debating on switching to Bella Lash products. Convince me. Have I not convinced you already? Just kidding. Bella Lash products are great. Um, a lot of our products, the reason why I love our products so much, a lot of our products are patented items. So these are products that are safe. They're made in the USA. Um, there's no crazy weird chemicals in them. You know, when you're ordering from other, other states and other companies, you don't know what's in the products. You know, our products are, are safe. They're made in the USA. Um, that's the number one reason why I love them. I also love them because they're great quality. Um, but you should try some and see what you think. It's really, it's really, really great. Okay, how do you handle someone in the same booth rent salon charging a lot less than you? So, that's a hard situation. Um, you can't really, I mean, maybe you could go up to them and say, hey, raise your prices up. There's always gonna be people that are way lower than you and way higher than you in pricing. Um, as long as you are comfortable with what you're charging for your services, you know, whether you're breaking that down hourly or monthly, if you're happy with the income and how, what you're making, I would just say don't worry about it, you know. Um, but you know, if it's affecting your clientele, if you're having people leave um, to go to her, that's a hard situation. But again, offer those clients good quality work. Um, you know, go the extra mile and just letting them know how much you appreciate them and treat them in the best way they can, so that no matter what your prices are, they'll stay with you. Those are great questions. Do you use a primer and how do you use it? Yes, I do use a primer. Um, I like to prime because it removes the extra oil and dirt and debris off the lashes. Um, now, if you're not cleansing before the appointment, I would definitely recommend priming. The only time I would not prime is if the client has very dry, brittle lashes in general. Then I would go ahead and use warm water and a cleanser for that. Um, but that's a great option. So primer, again, works great. It cleans the lashes so well so that you get a really good bond. Um, but there are some clients that have brittle or weak natural lashes that you'll want to just use warm water and cleanse. 
If you don't prefer a primer, that is fine too. Again, you just need to make sure that you clean the lashes because even if they clean them before they come in, you don't know if they put moisturizer on their face and it got onto their lash line. Um, so making sure you do a very good cleanse beforehand will give you the best um, application possible. Okay, how many people would you practice on before you would start taking clients? That's a great question. That varies depending on your comfortability. Um, you know, as I'm educating students, I just let them know if you're comfortable with it and you feel good and you feel confident, great. Go ahead and start taking clients. Um, I just wouldn't start taking clients until you feel comfortable to do so. Um, you know, they're going to be char you're going to be charging them for that. So as long as you're comfortable to do that um, and you feel like you're creating good quality work that you can charge for, absolutely. Um, you know, people understand we all start somewhere, right? We've all had to practice. We've all had to start somewhere. We all had to glue lashes together when we were first practicing. It happens to all of us. Um, but the more you practice, the better you're going to get. So get as many people as you can. And as soon as you feel confident, then I would start lashing. Definitely. Okay. You use a sealer and in the service. Um, sorry, I skipped a question. So I'm gonna go back. Any advice for beginners on controlling the direction of the lash? So if I'm understanding this right, I hope that you're talking about um, the direction after you place it, um, which is a great question. So if you're having issues with um, the extension kind of going crazy, what you wanna do is you wanna come in when you're placing that extension, use your hand as a rest. So what I mean by that is, if I'm coming into place on this side, I'm gonna rest my hand on her chin or um, uh, forehead area, wherever I need to be st stable, so that when I come in, it's nice and controlled, and I set that extension down perfectly on that natural lash. Now, we always want the extension to protrude straight out from the lash line, no matter which way the natural hair is lashing. So get the best one you can, and then all you have to do is release that extension and moving to the top of the extension, just holding your tweezer there. So if it starts to fall, you just give it a little tap and just kind of hold it in place until it dries. That will help you get better um, angles with your extensions. Okay, do you have to use a sealer at the end of a service? So we recommend using a sealer. We have a great sealer. Um, the reason being is the sealing agent works well with our adhesives to fully cure it properly, okay? So how I use that is if it's classic eyelash extensions, I will use my um, micro swab and I will, of course, dip it in my sealer. We never wanna cross contaminate here. So clean micro swabs, dip it in, and I'm gonna dab it across the lash line. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the mascara one I've been using and I'm just gonna comb it all the way through the um, classic extensions. That's gonna put a clear protectant over the entire extension to protect it from the client's natural oil, any dirt and debris that will get on the lash line, you know, any pollution if you're in a big city, things like that. It just helps to protect the lashes and to fully cure that adhesive properly. Um, now, if it's volume, can you seal after a volume? Absolutely. Um, you just have to be careful not to brush through the volume lashes until the sealant is dry. So what I mean by that is I would again use my micro swab and I'm gonna apply the sealant along the lash line where the adhesive is, okay? Then I'll use my air puffer or my fan to fully dry it before I comb through the volume fans. It's a great option to help with the retention of your lashes. Okay, these are great questions, guys. What do you use if you get adhesive on your skin? Do you remove it? Yes, you need to remove it. Um, so if you as a lash artist get it on your skin, after the service, you can use acetone and soak it on there a little bit and it will remove the adhesive. Now, if you get adhesive on the client, for example, if you're going to place an extension and the client talks or sneezes or moves and I accidentally bump it and get it on her eyelid, what I like to do is I quickly grab a micro swab and I dab it in a little bit of water that I have on hand and I will put it right on that spot that the adhesive touched. What that will do is that will blanch and cure the adhesive very, very fast. So at the end of the service, all I have to do is pick it off very softly and it'll pop right off. Okay, do you have a recommended Lash Girl serum that doesn't interfere with extensions? Yes, Bell Lash has an eyelash serum that does not affect your retention. It is safe to use with eyelash extensions. Um, we are the only people on the market that actually will brand that. It is safe to use with eyelash extensions. Our Lash Girl Serum is great. It, the peptide count is very high. It doesn't leave a dark line on your eyelid um, when you use it like some others do. 
safe to use with extensions. I always recommend our Lash Girl Serum. If a client comes to me and I have to do a removal and there's a lot of damage there, it works amazing. If you haven't tried it, you should try it definitely. I love your lives and all your products. I hope I can train with Bella one day. Yes, you can. Sign up for a course. You can train with us. You can be part of our Bella family. Okay, awesome. Thank you guys so much for our live videos and for joining us. We love having you. We love answering these questions. Um, if you have any other questions, hop on our next live, ask away. Thanks again for supporting Mellow Lash. We appreciate each and every one of you and thank you so much.